Step one for making plastic bag mats for the homeless is to get a good stockpile of already cut bags. You need to lay them out and kind of uh, like they were almost new. Get them kind of as straight and wrinkle free as we can. And I usually do a stack of about six or seven, but there's no right or wrong way. If you wanted to do them singly, that's fine. Uh, you start getting more than like 10 and you run into ends that didn't get cut. But you want to make sure you get the seam. If you want to try to go really close, that's fine. I usually give it about a half an inch to cover to make sure I cut the seam. And on the handle part, you want to make sure you get below this little fuzzy stuff or you're going to have it all over your house. Just cut them out, lay them off to the side. It takes a thousand average bags to make one two and a half foot by six foot mat. Okay, so to start making, I call it scrunching. You can call it whatever you want. If you want to get a nice color pattern, scrunch from the bottom and then roll in from the top so your colored in the middle stands out. And I just hook them on my finger as I go. Kind of roll them in up to the colored and then take the top and roll it down so you have your color in the middle. You need four to start. Roll them up from the bottom, roll them up from the top. Have your color. And once you have your four, you take your three and take this one and bring it through the middle. And a little bit of a loop, put your fingers through, grab your other one, pull it through, and you're making a knot. Kind of pull it off to the side. And then, then you have your three strands. Once you have your three wrapped into the one with your knot off to the side, if you want to get your color pattern, you keep your color up the best you can. It's not always going to be 100% up. It doesn't matter. There's no quality control on this. Go leave yourself a little loop, and then you go under, over, under, and then you bring it around under, over, and bring it around. It's a weave. Then under, over, and around. And when your bags start getting short, you just grab another one. And the way you did your knot at the top, that's how you're going to do it. You just loop it through. Give it a little tug. And that's how you feed every bag. And then you just continue on doing under and over. And if you could try to get your knots pushed a little bit so they're not sticking up as much. And just up and over. Back and forth. This is the most tedious part of it actually. And as you can see how I'm starting to get a color pattern going compared to where it's all white on the back. There's more color on the front. I really couldn't tell you because I've never really counted how many bags it takes going down to get about two and a half foot. And if you want to make them a little thinner or a little longer, it's all up to you. I have gotten carried away and not paid attention and ended up with some of them almost three and a half foot wide. This is your process through the whole thing. You just keep adding whenever they get low. And that's about where you want it, about two and a half foot. And now I use this little weighted wood 
to help out with this next step just because it helps hold. I'm going to start your corner with an extra long weave here because you want to kind of pull that off to the side. You want to make sure it's on your bottom here. And then you need a five braid, which is bring your first one down over this. This is your one. Here is your two coming this way. Three, four, and five. So you have all three of them again. And then you take your weave and continue your under, over, under, and I always put my finger in here just to leave a little loop because this is what you're going to connect with. And you go back, under, over, and now you want to go into your first hole. This is how anybody that knits or crochets or anything like that is probably going to realize that stuff. This is how you're going to connect your body. And then you under and over and around, under, over, around. And you want to go into your next in between your weaves, which is, these are your weaves. You want to grab your hole here, give a little tug. You don't want to go too tight. You want to leave some squish back down and around, trying to keep your color up if that's how you want your design to be. All right, and you will keep doing this repetitive motion until you reach your six foot in length. You just keep feeding it in each row. I couldn't tell you exactly how many rows. It all depends on how tight you pull them in. If they're looser, you're going to get to the six foot a little bit quicker. This is your first loop, which is why you needed it to be your end of that row. And being at the end again, continue this down, get your last weave in. And on this, I always like kind of tuck it over so this is won't pull funny. And then you do your five braid again. One, two, three, four, five. And then you have your three down again. And you start over. And you want to kind of bring it in towards the body of the mat. Or else you're going to start getting either the hourglass or I guess the opposite would be like a, a fat Christmas ornament. You're going to have one that's going to start growing on you. And there we are on our third row. And like I said, you just keep continually going back and forth and back and forth until you get your six foot length. To add in the strap, like I said, about two foot down into your mat, you're going to take your four, like you're going to start over again. This also shows how you can do all different sizes if you're not trying to do a Pacific pattern or, or color. Just any old bags. You start with your four down. And on this, you put them all together. I do 
three from the end. This is your end, one, two, three, and this is where you're coming out. You run your weaver through the middle of them. And then you grab your bottom one to continue on your pattern. And then you still do the same, wrapping up and over. Except now you have just a bigger pack in the middle here. And I try to do it closest one in. I don't use your end ones here, I use the first one. And you can just continue the same way you've been doing. Over and under and around and through. And there's your last loop. Bring it down. And I kind of like tuck it in so you know where you're at here. And you find your three that you started with and now you just like you're starting all over starting a brand new one except you're just going to be making let's see one, three, making your strap so separate out your four however works for you and then you start over again just using these four that you weaved in. One over, under, over, under, around. And that's you continue it on. I do about a three foot strap only because um, as you continue to add length to your mat it's going to get a little shorter and you want it to be able to be able to be rolled up which I will show you that when I get down to the end of closing. Um, we've gone ahead and moved and done the strap. As you can see it's kind of long. What I do to remind myself is I do my four up and I stuff the end of it in there. So as I'm continuing down I don't forget and just keep going that I need to add the strap in. It's your feed. You do your four or your five, one, two, three, four, five for your braid on your corner. And you start all over again, leave your little loop on that one. And at this point, too, if you do see yourself getting a little wider than the rest, you can pull on these that'll pull this in more. And it also works the same if you're starting to get the, like I said, the hourglass where you're getting smaller in the middle. You can use your braid and kick it out more to get your width back a little bit more standard that we've done the strap and you try to get them all to the same length you can pull these tighter to get some more length instead of adding a whole new bag on because you're going to use your ends as your loop just like we did when we started and obviously they're not all exactly the same length 
move this one around a little bit more because it's some shorter. But you try to get them close to. And, and you go through, this would be where I put it in a hole. But if you can see where this is going to be on your end, this is about the length of where you want to start feeding it back in. So you do the same process, just pull this through, grab your bottom, oops, this one is going over top, and then put it in your hole, wrap it up over top of your whole bunch, and then just continue on like it is your single feed. So. After painstakingly about 10 hours is what takes me to get this far, if, if I already have all the bags cut. What I generally do is hold it up a little over my head. I'm 5'9". If it's on the floor and it's over my head, it's tall enough for the average person to lay down on it. And then you just roll them up. And this is also a good spot to show with the handle and the strap. This one's kind of shorter. When you get to rolling it, just tuck it all in. And there you have that. We're getting down towards the end, and as you can see, get different lengths, which at this point isn't going to matter. So we get down to the last of our row. And just feed through your last little bits here. And your last one in, finish it off. And what I do is I knot them. You start there, because this is your end, and if you start this on the end, you're not gonna have nothing to tie it to. Just looping them around, give a good tug, and then I do one more just hooking them all together. And I leave a little bit of a tail. I don't know how rough and tough people are going to be with these, but it shouldn't be too bad. And then for the strap to hold it rolled up, since this is a multi-bag, I'm going to start out with just doing three of my runs. And this is just for the end of the tie. Put them all together and try to figure out about roughly where the center is. I go a good two rows up to give it some strength. And you just loop them. Separate them. And I just braid it. I wrap it. I make them long enough to be able to wrap it twice around the mat. Just in case they do want to incorporate leaving their blankets or pillows or, you know, maybe it might even work if they can roll their clothes up in it for easier traveling whatever the case may be they've got some extra length 
to add to it.